Bad Toy Lady. Apparently I'm a little squeaky today. Um, thank you all for joining me. It's a little bit different of a conversation today. Um, it's not a toy video, but we talk about toys and just some educational information that I get a lot of questions on or I see people doing DIYs that I kind of worry about the safety of the toy or the item or even toys in stores just because it's in the store doesn't mean that it's actually thought out and safe um so forgive me while i look down for a second and join my own chat here so i can see what comments look like and hello amy fowler i am good today how are you thank you for joining me um this is definitely made to be rewatched, so I'm just kind of going to go and speed through things. At the end, I will take some questions, and periodically through, I will, uh, because I really think everyone needs a lot of this information. And the topic is, as we know, does size matter? And the answer, when it comes to just about everything that has to do with a cat, yes. And I'll kind of explain why not to go too big or too small and whatnot. Um, my big pet peeve that I keep seeing a lot of that I want to start with is actually the cat litter box. Yes, size big time matters with this. Um, I have an acquaintance that uh, I love to kind of Facebook, Facebook stalk or don't mind the, cat, the dog toenails going across the hardwood above me. Click, click, click. Um, and yeah, they're old. I, I can't fight and get their nails down to short little nubs anymore. It just doesn't work. Um, <laughs> side note. But, um, so litter box size. Basically, every litter box that you're going to see in uh, a store, it, it's the wrong size for your cat, even most kittens. Um, and I get a lot of my information from the person I was just talking about that I Facebook and Instagram stock. Um, Tabitha is, uh, her website is chirps like chirps um and chatter it's c h i r r u p s a n d c h a t t e r dot com chirps and chatter she is a um behavioralist when it comes to cats and dogs but she really is good at cats I mean really really good so I follow a lot of her information and I will say I stole my litter box information straight from her because she is that good um I will definitely Ooh, actually I can put her information down in the uh chat since I'm the only moderator I think um, I'm not big enough to have lots of fancy other moderators. All right, chirpsandchatter.com. There we go. All right, so I just put it in the chat. And hello, Miss Susan. Thank you for joining me. So litter box size. A lot of people do not realize that, like I just said, the litter boxes that are sold in stores, even the jumbo, are actually too small for most cats. The rule of thumb is that you want however big your cat is one and a half times the size of them is how big you want your litter box and we're not talking tail because cats can have crazy long tails sometimes or short little nubs but from tip of the nose all the way to the butt you want one and a half size of that length is how long your litter box is you really need that that way your cat can comfortably turn around i mean think about when you're in an airplane and trying to use the bathroom in an airplane. It's not comfy. Would you want that to be your where you went to the bathroom every single day? Not, you know, ideal. A lot of cats do it, but there is a lot of behavioral issues that as a vet tech, um, I see cats come in for. It's just people don't realize that uh, covered litter boxes also do you want to go pee in a cave? I mean, just really something that your head, that when you stand up fully, most covered litter boxes, the cat's ears still touch. No one wants to go to the bathroom with their head touching the ceiling every single time. Um, or having to do really funky positions just to go to the bathroom. Um, 
So, let's see, Miss... Ooh, I can add Miss Amy as a moderator. So there you go, Amy. You should be a moderator now, uh, since you're in my chats a lot and I see you on other places. Um, so yes, one and a half times the length of your cat is how long your litter box needs to be. And a good rule of thumb is clear is better, especially if you have multiple cats. Cats don't wanna feel like they're going to be ambushed inside their litter box. Again, that's part of the reason that the covered litter box is kind of crappy for them. <laughs> crappy um so go to target go to walmart get the clear rubbermaid so I, you've seen me make other videos with litter boxes it's that type of clear um the taller wall is better especially as you get cats that are getting older senior cats do not squat as well and that way the pee even if they're not squatting to pee and they're just kind of spraying up the back end it catches it all for you and again, size matters. The opening of your litter box. A lot of people like to make itty bitty holes that are like five inches for your cat to crawl through. That way it keeps all the litter inside or less chance of them peeing outside. When you have to pee, do you want to be manipulating yourself through a little slinky hole? No. <laughs> so again, when it comes to the litter box, think of what you want when you're going potty. Um, you know, a bigger entrance is better. Circular holes, maybe not so much, just because as they go to step through, the side curves up and their feet can hit, especially as they do start to get older. So I myself, and this is not something that I, I think I've ever seen recommended, but myself, I stick to straight edges as uh, the bottom of the lip. Of the hole that I make and I don't usually cut a hole out I just go from the top all the way down and then slice across um, so I don't worry about the cats knocking their head on anything uh, <laughs> and if you're seeing the live chat my husband just joined the group um, he's exploring with the nug and uh, S.A. says that she will pee in a cave. That's my sister-in-law. Um, I believe it. <laughs> but really, most of us don't like to. Um, again, when it comes to size of your litter, size matters too. If you get too fine and sandy of litter, sometimes cats don't like it because it does stick so easily between the toes. But the bigger, chunkier chunkier litters can hurt. They have sharper edges. They just don't feel good to walk on. Think about when a piece of it comes out on your carpet or hardwood and you step on it. If it hurts your feet, it's going to hurt their feet. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. So the bigger, more organic litters are not always so welcomed by your cat. And on a side note, if you find a litter that your cat seems to really like, don't change it. So many problems happen when you change your litter, especially the people that like to change their litter a lot. Um, and then they can't figure out why they have their cat peeing out of the box or even pooping out of the box. Um, all right, let's move on here. Um, <laughs> my husband said kind of like Legos when it comes to the litter. Yeah, some of them are big pellets with sharp edges to them. I, I wouldn't want to step on that. Um, let's see. Treat sizes. Um, a lot of people are into making their own treats right now. Um, and I've recently seen a lady that wants to make basically small dog biscuits for cats. Um, if it's bigger than a quarter, your yeah, your cat can sit there and chew on it. But most cats are going to get discouraged. Um... There is a lot of money that is spent in the food industry for testing the size, shape, texture of cat food and cat treats to make sure that they are the most palatable that they can be to a cat, that it's the right crunch and size. So that's why a lot of treats happen to look exactly the same because they know what works. So don't go for something that's the size of a quarter for your cat. Um, dogs chew a little differently and chomp down differently than cats. So a small dog versus a small, uh, same size cat is going to eat a treat differently. Um, let's see. I think 
think that's all I have for my notes. I have notes in front of me if you couldn't tell. Um, yes, we do have a cat that likes hot wings if you're reading the chat. Um, that happened before I came along. Uh, <laughs> my husband used to share his hot wings, like the little nub on the drumstick. He'd always spit that out for the cat. And now she, almost 15 years later, is still wanting hot wings. Not good for digestion, hot sauce, fried foods, just, you know, I just, but you can't break your husband of all habits, so, okay. <laughs> um, on to the next, does size matter? Toys. Oh my god, of course, that's why I'm here, why I make DIY videos that are so specific, and why I don't use certain items, too, to make toys. Um... Of course, if it's something that's too small, your cat can swallow it. It's kind of a no-brainer on that one. But people don't think about necessarily the size of other toys. If it's something that's like a kicker, you want a bigger toy. You want something that is the length of your cat's body. That way they can hold on to the top and rabbit kick with the back feet and not have to be scrunched up, that they can be completely you know, their size, their uh, straightness, and still be able to kick and play. So kickers that are like four inches kind of don't make sense to me. It can be a, a catnip toy um, and be four inches, but companies that call them kickers and they're four inches long makes me want to just scream at them. Um, and yes, cats love kickers. If you don't have one for your cat, maybe look into it it can be a very, very big popular thing in the house. Um, and cats, I don't know why, it, that rabbit kick, that gutting motion with the back feet, they just get so into it and they really love it. Um, let's see. What else did I have? Oh, ideal size for a cat toy is the size of a mouse or a rat, prey size. The cat isn't going to go out and st stalk a kangaroo. I mean, <laughs> you have to think about certain sizes. Some people like really big toys and they buy like dog toys for their cats. Some cats might have that personality, but most their instinct says to go for something that's smaller than them. Um, I thought this was common sense until I walked through the pet store and see certain things and or see uh, Pinterest. I have a little bit of a Pinterest addict or addiction um, but some of the recommended toys to make that are DIY on there I don't say anything I just look at the comments and see that other people have screamed at them about the stupidity of it but it's still on Pinterest and gives people ideas and they might not look at the comment of how stupid it is to make certain things for your cat um, like things that are covered in ribbons that you give your cat and you walk away from them. Anything that could be iffy is a toy that if you want them to play with it, like strings and ribbons, you play with it with them and then you take it away. It's a crazy concept. A lot of people just will let their cat play with ribbons and strings and walk away and do whatever they want and leave it out for days and then they forget about it. And then a month later, their cat's puking everywhere, and they come into the vet, and they can't figure out why their cat's so sick. And then we do x-rays, and we see something wadded, or we see there's this thing called an intussusception, where your intestines, instead of being tube, starts swallowing itself, and it's eating its own body, like the intestines eating itself. And that's because they left a string that had a knot in it, which happened to get itself anchored in the stomach, typically. Uh, but the rest of the string starts feeding through the intestines. And it starts making the intestines bunch up like an accordion. Um, that is, unfortunately, very, very common when it comes to cats eating strings and ribbons. Um, please don't do that. Or, or the dog that for some reason the owner tied a ribbon to to play with a sock. I've seen this more than once. That's why I say this sock on the end with a string and <sighs> he 
people don't always use what I consider common sense, but they may not know. Um, ooh, I got my first super chat. <laughs> Woo! Um, by the way, when I do get super chats, um, my, or donations and different things, or make money off YouTube in any way, I use it to, one, buy supplies to be able to, um, make, um, toys for you for DIY, but I use a lot of it. I donate to rescue groups. I send cat ones to rescue groups and different toys and crinkle toys. And so it, I don't just sit and keep the money, um, because I do work with so many rescue groups. I always give back. So thank you. Very, very appreciated. Um, yes, the string can come out the butt. Um, and of course a lot of people's first instinct is to pull, I say my husband before I came along, um, pull the string out of the bottom. Um, unfortunately I have seen where it was still anchored in the stomach and when the owner gave it a big yank, they sliced through the intestines. So not necessarily a good thing to do. So again, size and different types of toys do matter. If you're going to give a ribbon and it's something that's like, you know, an inch or two on a toy. That's completely different than giving eight inches of ribbon for them to play with, or more. Um, or this stupid toy that I keep seeing on Facebook that is basically like a toilet paper roll with ribbons dangling down. Where they tie a little knot in the ribbon and poke a hole through the, uh, the toilet paper wand, that way the ribbons can or wand, the toilet paper roll, so the ribbons can dangle. And it's just this one little knot holding it in place. So when the cat yanks hard, the ribbon comes out. Um, and it's one that they made to hang from the door. That way the owners don't have to be around as the cat's playing with it. How dumb can you be? Let's put ribbon through paper. <laughs> Sorry, the tech in me is just dying. Um, and good morning, Phoenix. Um, it's not really morning here, but we're East Coast. Um, I guess it's 12 something at this point, but uh, lucky you all that got to sleep in a little later. Um, so yes, toy size. Oh, let me, I, I, I took a screenshot yesterday of one of the ones on Pinterest that I was going to actually share with you because it kills me. So let's see. Let's zoom this one in. By the way, um, yes, knitted items are really, really cute for your cat, but not the brightest because if the piece ever starts unraveling, then you have a super long string. So I am not a fan of anything knitted for cats. I don't care what it is. Unless, well, actually I do care. If it's a wand, a wand toy that you are playing with and you put away, yeah, that's one thing. Let's see. That, where it's a springy um, toy that has a ball on the end. Some of these I've seen that the ball's actually quite small or something long, like let's, like these two, where it's a long, flat fish that can be stuck, uh, knitted items. The cats have hairs on their tongue that point backwards. When you get a piece of fuzz on the cat tongue, the way the hairs work is they kind of reach out and almost grab and it, it just feeds itself backwards with the way that the hairs on the tongue are pointed. So even if cat's not trying to actually swallow the string, it can get fed back that way if it, you know, the fuzzes of it get stuck on the tongue. So having a flat fish um, or a small ball isn't that, you know, knitted items do squish up. So a ball isn't really a ball. It's just something that can get squished. This, both of these can end up being swallowed. And I have seen a very similar item that was the corkscrew style with a ball on the end get removed. Um, so that's why I have um, a pet peeve against them. Granted, I don't work anymore in an animal hospital, like a traditional style one. Um, I do relief for different ones still. God, how many years has it been? Um, 
I think this is year 22 that I've been in the animal field. So I've seen a lot. I am working emergency. I, uh, I've been exposed to a lot more than just regular day practice because in an emergency, you, you see some dumb stuff <laughs> to be nice. Okay. So, oh yes. Um, this person, Phoenix says that their cat, mom's cat ate tinsel. Tinsel is another one of those that does this miraculous thing where it kind of gets wadded up and then it starts getting fed through the stomach and the intestines and it's actually sharp. Tinsel is known for slicing through the intestines and making the contents spill out and then they get septic and a lot of cats and dogs do not make it when things start spilling out. Um, so yeah, tinsel. I don't know why anyone uses it anymore. Honestly, I grew up in the Christmas business and we hated having to take tinsel off of the tree. Um, my grandfather was the main wholesaler for Christmas coming into the country through like the eighties and nineties. Um, Amy Fowler, what have I missed? Had to take a call. Um, basically don't use yarn for anything for cats. It gets stuck to the hair of the tongue and just does not do well. Um, on to more does size matter? See me drool on myself. Um, <laughs> scratchers. Oh my god, scratchers. Um, again, a pet peeve. I, I really should just stay away from Pinterest or Facebook because <laughs> of some of the stuff I see. Like, I'm in a lot of dollar store groups because I make a lot of stuff that's dollar store. Um, Someone took a dollar store emergency cone that sits, I think they're 10 inches, 8 inches, something like that, um, and wrapped rope, and not just like a sisal rope, but rope, um, like a cotton rope around it, over and over and over, and made a scratcher for their cat. Giving your cat a small scratcher is kind of like being told, take this piece of paper and do yoga on it. And I want to see you stretch out and work out all the kinks while standing on a piece of paper. Can't really be done. And something that's so lightweight like that, um, and made of cotton, which your cat's nails are going to easily get snagged in, it's just going to end up falling over. I mean, it's 10 inches. Your cat, when they stand up, their butt's probably taller than it. Um, God, I feel really negative today with everything, but it's all my pet peeves that I'm going over. So forgive me if I'm a little dry and sarcastic about it all. But yes, don't think that a cat can be comfortable scratching on things that are so small. They're going to find other ways to scratch and get that kitty yoga out. And you're not going to like it. it. That's what it boils down to. Um, carpet fibers. People love to cover their scratchers in carpet. Um, again, a big pet peeve of mine. Um, you wouldn't believe how many nail trims I've done in the past where there's carpet fuzz sticking out of the cat's nails. Um... If you're going to use carpet to cover a cat tree, don't buy traditional carpet. Buy a short, like indoor, outdoor carpet material. Um, anything with long fibers, yes, it feels squishy to us, but the fibers are going to get stuck in your cat's nails. And it actually leads a lot to a back sh shred, I guess you could call it, where the curved nail, um, it starts getting like, flaps, I guess you could say, that sticks up to the nail. And that's where the carpet fibers will get stuck. So it doesn't help with the nails shredding in the proper way. Um, they actually can get irritation from uh, the fiber being stuck in the toes because when they retract down, then they have fiber that's trying to go into the sheath of the toes. Um, I've seen actually where some cats were chewing on their nails, trying to get that off and end up damaging around their knuckles because they can't get the fiber out 
and it's irritating, they're trying to, and they cause more damage than good. Amy says that her cat will eat any type of ribbon. I almost wore my purple necklace that has my um, glass cat on it, but I realized it wasn't sitting quite right because my cat tried to get a hold of it up on my little holder. Um, I too have a ribbon eater. If it's anywhere in the house, she will find it. Um, which is great when you have kids and their friends want to make them friendship bracelets of all sorts of different types and ropes and strings. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I have one that m multiple times we have pulled stuff out of her throat. And of course, if it's on the throat and you're trying to pull out, go very slow. It can already be anchored somewhere. Just saying. Um... And we have a Louie in the house. I think that's Louie. Louie? Louise? Um, I've never been good at that. Um, hey. <laughs> um, so, yeah. God, I'm a weird in-between hotness right now. I am in my basement. That's where I film. Um, garage door is right there. It's cold and rainy here. There's no heat in the garage. Hence the jacket. Oh, it's my Ellen jacket but it's for her uh pet food brand i got it when she launched her pet, pet food when i went to the global pet expo back when i used to work, work in the cat toy industry imagine that me working in the cat toy industry that's where i got a lot of this knowledge um you have a cat that chews on plastic uh and an older one that eats paper well paper's not most vets don't worry about paper toys um, just because paper does break down. Um, even if it's a big ball of paper and it makes it into the stomach after a month or so, it will start to break down. It's not just going to sit and cause a lot of damage. If it sits, it's going to eventually start working its way through. So paper is not that big of a thing. That's why a lot of doctors, like when someone comes in, my cat started chewing on the cardboard box and she ate some of the pieces. The doctor's just going to laugh at them. I've seen it. Um, so yeah. So paper, not so bad. Plastic, oh, that could be a problem. There's a petroleum that's in a lot of like plastic bags from the grocery store that cats love to lick on. Um, but plastic bags, when they shred, come out in little strings, it seems like for some reason. Um, and I have seen a cat that had that on the inside. So, you know, you got to be careful with plastic. You know you have a plastic eater, so anything plastic, just try to keep away. Um, like, I have a toy that I showed how to make out of the Dollar Tree uh, tablecloths, the plastic ones, where you cut them in half, and then you fringe them, and you have a little uh, play rug for them. That would not be a toy for you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, I... I do have a tendency of speaking the truth. Oh, my friends love it. <laughs> the same as my husband. Um, so while we're still on scratchers and talking about size of things, um, size of the texture of what they're clawing on does matter too. Um, there are, are lots of lots of veterinary studies that have been coming out the last like 10 years on what cats like to scratch on. Um, Cornell University did them. They're published in the feline medicine journals. Um, so you can surf these yourself. The texture of what they scratch and the bumpiness as they're going down makes a difference. Believe it or not, everyone loves to do a DIY with sisal rope. That is literally, in every single study, the least favorite thing a cat likes to scratch on. They will scratch on it if there's no other choice, but most do not like it. Um, even in some of the studies, there were problems with cats trying to pee on it instead of scratching on it. Because they knew it was a good spot to mark, but they didn't like their claws touching it. The bumpiness, like the staccato jerking of it going all the way down and how rough it is, and sisal has these little fibers that can stick out and stab them in the pads. Um, all that is contributed to why they think that cats don't like sisal rope. And again, you have never seen me make a toy with sisal rope, and it's because I've already read these studies before, and I stay away from them. 
if you are going to use carpet, again, short fibers, like indoor outdoor carpet, um, usually I have a piece around somewhere, but I think I use it all in the RV. And by the way, I am going to start making, once I, a lot of you know I haven't been health-wise so great, um, so once I am done with all that stuff, I'm going to start showing how I'm going to be cat, cat, not cat proofing, um, getting my RV ready for the cats because this summer as we travel the cats are going to come with us and they need safe places litter box places all that goodness scratchers and RVs don't have a lot of room so I'm going to show what I'm going to do for that um, so yeah by the way cardboard is one of the top items on most of the research researchers um, and a lot of them do check a cat's like a variety. A lot of cats like to be able to stand on what they're scratching, like the cardboard scratchers that they stand on. And a lot of cats like either an angle or a straight up and down scratcher. Um, but the length of it does matter. Again, you want your cat to be able to do kitty yoga and fully stretch out and still be able to have enough room to get their claws in. Cats don't want to claw like this. Um, what else do I have? <sighs> Cat climbers. <laughs> there is a time and place for different sizes. Um, a lot of people think that giving their cat, you know, it's like a circle. Ooh, I can draw it. <laughs> Let's see. A circle with a climber on top. Let's see, so you can see this on there. Okay, like that. People think that something along those lines that comes up to like your kneecap or maybe your hip is all a cat needs. Oh my goodness. Most cats, and I'm saying like 99%, want at some point to be able to get up high. Um, it's a safety thing, actually, because they can see any type of prey coming for them. Um, think about cats climbing up trees. Um, it's a, again, a workout, getting to climb all the way up there, various means of it. Um, and, you know, there might be something else logically to a cat that, I mean, how many cats get on doors or get on top of dressers that are up high? Um, you know, the top of cabinets, there is just a need to climb up high and be the highest one in the room for a cat. Let's see. Sorry, I was reading back. I just saw a new comment about, uh, mine treads all the cardboard box corners in the house. Then climb up on the piles within uh, eight inches of the ceiling. Yeah. Cats like to be king of the mountain. And so many people only want to give their cats these itty bitty scratchers that are kind of discreet because they don't want them seen in their house. Um, and then they wonder why they have behavioral issues. And scratchers solve a lot, and climbers uh, solve a lot of behavioral issues, believe it or not. And playing, um, even some medical problems are solved by playing with your cat five minutes a day for two five minute periods a day. Um, there are some urinary issues that can only be fixed by exercise and playtime. That There isn't a medicine that completely fixes it for cats. So, I mean, we cause a lot of the behavioral issues, I will say. And yeah, some cats do refuse to use cardboard scratchers or you can also try, they only like certain angles. Like my cat, she, if it's cardboard, she'll scratch on anything. But I had one that loved vertical, not just scratch down on the ground, but she liked everything to be upright. Um, and this was back in the day before I knew better about declawing. Please don't ever declaw. Um, she didn't even have claws, but because that is the way to scent mark, she still scratched, but she only liked things that were upright and she did prefer cardboard. I think it's probably because it was softest on her little pads 
and oh hi Ed flash in your pan is joining me today too um, he's got some indoor outdoor kitties indoor and out indoor outdoor but yes I've sent his kitties presents before um, let's see mama cat has outlived all her offspring oh she's now very sad how can I help her seems to be depressed well playtime can actually really help um there can be things like brushing um brushing kind of interacts as a cat being groomed by one another you notice that they do like to clean each other us, us brushing them with a soft brush Not, none of the hard like combs that have these sharp teeth um Sorry, that's going to be on my list for in a, in a minute, uh, talking about brush size. But brushing, I mean, getting a younger cat, another one, um, can help bring some spunk out. Um, but I'll talk to you later about all that, Ed. Um, let's see. So, yeah, climber size. Please consider giving your cat something up high. Um, bed size. Again, People don't always think about these cat beds and the size of what they're giving their, their cats. Um, cats do like to curl up and be fairly encapsulated, we'll say. You know, something that kind of holds them a little. Um, so you need to adjust depending on the size of your cat. I have a Goliath of a cat, so she gets bigger beds. Um, but what a lot of people don't think about is these cat beds that are kind of like cat caves where there's one hole. It kills me that so many of these companies make holes that, I mean, are barely bigger than a grapefruit. And the cat is trying to slink into it, but they don't, it's so small on the inside that they have to automatically, as they're still trying to, pull their legs through they're trying to turn around and twist at the same time and as your cat gets older they do get arthritis they don't tell us about it cats are very good at hiding when they start getting arthritis most people do not realize that their cat is in discomfort and pain from arthritis for three to five years is what a lot of studies are showing keep that in mind um so these beds that have one exit um, which in a multi-cat house, a lot of cats don't like. They need two exits so they know that they can run away. They can't figure out, they buy this expensive wool cat cave that they see other cats in other videos curling up in. And then they can't figure out why their cat either A, sleeps on top, or B, completely ignores it. They don't like the size of the opening, typically. It's a very comfy, warm bed. Wool holds heat. It has a, that lanolin smell that cats love. Um wool toys certain ones that are made right their cats love to bite into but having a bed that your cat can barely turn around in with an itty bitty opening and then you can't figure out why in your multiple cat house none of the cats will touch it they're worried that they're going to be ambushed and you know trying to get through an itty bitty hole to be able to sleep and lay down isn't very fun um, so bed size. And of course, yes, some cats do love big dog beds, but they do like things that are smaller and have just a little bit of a edge to them to kind of hold their love handles, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, like uh, my cat, she likes something that holds her. Like my, my big girl, like if you saw the heart that I made, I didn't give it a very high edge because she she's this cat that whatever she's sitting on or laying on she likes to ooze off of it so if i put too big of a, a lip she wouldn't be able to do that that's not for all cats some cats really like to feel comforted and held on the sides um like if she sits in a chair or on the couch on her cat tree she always has an arm that drapes off like she <laughs> and she's big and even my dining room chair she oozes off of because she's just too big but you have to think about your cat's personality when you're picking out a lot of this stuff. And what about shelves for them to climb on? I love shelves. Um, I don't like carpeted shelves um, that like 
it, it, let me rephrase that. I don't like shelves that can't be cleaned easily. Cats, if you have a cat that vomits a lot, you really need to get them to the vet. Vomiting is not normal, um, but I have the once every couple week hairball cat, and if she is up on a climber or anything that can't be wiped down, I regret it sometimes. I, I will say, like, some of the scratches I've made, I've been lucky enough that I think only one of them she puked on. And it was one of the smaller ones. But my big cat tree, she has yet to puke on. Um, actually, she puked in the bowl. I take that back. Um, my big cat tree um, that has the clear bowl on top, she puked into the bowl. That, that made a lovely view from underneath. Um, but a lot of people like to put up these carpeted shelves that it, the carpet is firmly attached and can't be cleaned easily. Um, or the, it looked really neat, but the carpeted areas that run along your ceiling that you never see, um, like you can't see the tops of, people... How do you clean them? How do you get all the cat hair off? How do you get the dust off? Um, I like, there's a lot of shelves that are out there that have like sleeves that basically go on to the shelves. That way you can either replace them or throw them in the wash, in the bathtub, spray them down, vacuum them. Um, so just be careful what type of shelves you get. Yes, having something with traction does help. Um, like a little sandpaper-esque on top would be good. Um, nothing too hard grit because cat, cats don't like that on their toes. Let me see here. Um, and as long as it's not anything that some people like to put, um, like a, a, a ramp in between the shelves. If that's something that's slick, yes, that, that's hard for cats to walk on, um, because they kind of want to dig their nails in as they walk. So maybe like t something textured on that. Um, like the sandpaper strips. But really on regular shelves, cats don't need a lot of, of texture. Because there's not a lot of reason for them to fall off, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, shelves are really good. That is something that I have in my mind in the works. That kind of like a modular where you can change it up and adjust it. There are some really neat ones that are out there, but they cost thousands of dollars. So I don't like that. And of course, I can make it. I can make it for so much cheaper. Um, let's see. Next on my list of why size matters: size of cat bowls. <laughs> As a vet tech and me, um, I have some problems with some of the bowls that people use. Cats in general, um, well, okay, everyone knows that the running joke is if the cat can see the middle of the bottom of the bowl, they are telling you that they are out of food, that they need their bowl refilled just because it has that divot in it. Have you ever thought about why every cat does that? And have you ever seen that your cat doesn't like to fold their whiskers up? Like when you start playing around with their whiskers, most cats are like, oh my God, stop touching my whiskers. Um, or if you touch them, they do fold them back. Like they, they're kind of protective of their whiskers. A lot of people get these big bowls that have really high sides to them. And their cat doesn't want to put their head in and have to fold their whiskers up while they're eating. And they don't want their whiskers touching everything while they're eating. Um... So there are a lot of new bowls that are out that are kind of designed with just a slight trough to them, no sides, that cats really do prefer. Um, there's a lot of studies that are being done right now and coming out that show, I mean, one company, they coined the phrase and it kills me because it seems really cheesy, but it kind of is true. It, it makes a lot of sense. It's called whisker fatigue. Um, that's like the doctor something or another bowl. Um, I can picture it, but I can't. It's a stainless steel bowl that's just a little shallow divot. Um, yeah, whisker fatigue. I, I don't like the term, but I believe it is a thing. Um, cats just, they always go for the center of the bowl because they don't want their whiskers touching. And would you really want to be scrunched up like this all the time when you're eating? So, again, things to think through. Um, paper plates, 
really do work for cats. Um, it gets around a lot of the issues of the whiskers. Um, but if you don't like using disposable every time, look into some pet fr friendly bowls. And there are some really neat ones that are out there that are made out of bamboo and rice husk. Um, that it's a compostable bowl. So if you ever do drop and break it, uh, you just throw it in the compost pile. But it can go through the dishwasher. It holds up really well. Uh, it looks like a plastic bowl, basically, but it's made out of bamboo and rice husk. Um, afterwards, if I try to remember, I'll find a link and put it on Amazon, or the Amazon link to some of these bowls. They are awesome. And they come in lots of cute little pastel colors. I like the green. Imagine that. Um, let's see. So yeah, bowl size. It does matter. Um, too big of a bowl and cats feel like, you know, the slightest little divot and the, they're not getting enough food because they can see the bottom. Like, sorry, I just lost my train of thought looking at something on the floor. <laughs> yeah, too big is not good just because you have a cat that can overeat. Um, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. And granted, I'm guilty of it. I had some older cats that w would not touch wet food. Um, and my younger babies got used to having the all-you-could-eat buffet out. Um, and then when the older babies passed away, I was able to do wet food again. Um, so you just have to be mindful of the buffet style. Um, wet food is best to feed your cats. It does help kidney-wise. Um, and believe it or not, it does not destroy their teeth the way that you used to think it does. Um, even though some vets are still stuck on that th thought. Um, yes, I did have a squirrel moment. I can't figure out what's on the floor over there. It looks like a piece of marble. But I know we don't have marble anywhere. And it's just this cube. I, I'm in the garage. I have no idea what my husband left over there. <laughs> I blame him. For all I know, it's something he found in the river. Because he never brings any of that stuff home. Um, and my one of my other issues when it comes to size, to size matter, I kind of touched on it a couple minutes ago, but brush sizes. Um, so many people want to use the big dog brushes on their cats. And like um, the Furminator with the long teeth. Uh, like they have short little teeth, but it's a long piece of metal when that's going over your knuckles and it's not comfortable for a cat. If you're going to use a Furminator, get the short cat size. That way it hits the grooves a little better. Um, try to stay away from any of the ones that are like the, the D matter brushes on cats. Um, cat skin actually rips really easily. It is amazing how many people have brought their cats in to get fixed, like pieces of them fixed, um, because they were brushing with a too severe brush or comb and they actually ripped their cat's skin open. And then we have to super glue it back together typically. Um, so softer brushes are better. If you have a long haired cat that needs a little bit more oomph, go for one that's more of the human style that has like the plastic nubs on it. Um, you can buy the ones that are made for like kid backpacks um, of size to be able to brush your cat with. Just nothing metal, please. Okay. <laughs> but yes, bigger is not better when it comes to a cat brush. And last but not least, it has, imagine that it has hair stuck to it. Nail trimmers. Don't use dog nail trimmers on your cat. Um, it just doesn't get in the curve properly. Like you end up pinching on things. Um, I mean, these are like three bucks. Super duper cheap. Nice, easy nail trimmers. Buy cat nail trimmers. Don't just try to reuse the dog trimmers. It's just not fair for your cat. And you're going to start wondering why your cat has such an issue with you trimming the nails. And it's because you're not realizing that the pad's getting pinched. The, there's extra pressure that's being added to it. And oh, on that same note, when you are trimming a cat's nails, 
don't trim sideways. Like this is the nail up and down. Don't go sideways with it and pinch where the clippers come straight in. You want your clippers to go up and down. So I would go like this, not this. Um, the side to side basically squishes the nail off um, instead of really clipping it. Um, so it can be very painful and a lot of people don't realize that. Same with your dogs. As a vet tech and I've had to train lots of people, you would be shocked how many people thought they knew how to trim dog nails that were techs that didn't have the common sense of go up and down versus side to side. <laughs> so, all right, I feel like I really vented today. <laughs> Um, I feel a little better, you know, um, a lot of my pet peeves that I see on the internet that make me just want to strangle someone through Facebook or Pinterest and Instagram and, or even the TV sometimes, you'd be shocked. Um, yeah, yeah, like I heard my news anchor recently talking about how he doesn't have cats, but you know, if his cat clawed on something, he'd just declaw it. And I can't imagine the hate mail that man got. Um, declawing is never the way to go. It has a lot of consequences that people don't see or realize until it, after it's done. Um, so the paw project, if you need to educate yourself on why you should never declaw and you should really, I'm anti-vets that declaw. Um, one of my favorite vets that I've worked for in the past does think that um, if he doesn't do it, what if one of the other vets in the area that doesn't do it so well does it? Um, so he might as well do it because he is the better surgeon in the area. It's still not a reason. Um, Decline should be banned. It's banned, I think, in all of Canada now, if not a few of the territories. It's banned in... Okay, third world countries ban it. Um, I believe it's banned in Mexico and all through South America. Uh, most European countries it's banned. But our AVMA, the uh, Medical Board Association, still thinks that decline's okay. Because they're in people's pockets and not thinking about what's going on to the cats. Just saying, there's my vent. There's my other moment of the day. <laughs> uh, so, yes, declawing is a very harsh and gruesome surgery. Um, there's multiple ways to do it. I've seen it with lasers, what they call the guillotine method, um, which is just as gruesome as you would think, and bone chunks go flying sometimes. Um... I've seen razor blade style or um, surgical blade. Old school doctors, like 1980 style. Um, Yeehaw, backwards ones, still call it razor blade style. Um, but most of those that I've encountered like guillotine style, where they take dog trimmers and they wedge it up and then they just snip. And then whatever is left inside, if there's bone pieces left or if they get part of the other bone, it's okay. <laughs> but Paul Project, again, I said that a second ago, but research the Paul Project. They have a great video that explains everything and why it really is so bad. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know I covered a lot, vented a lot about things that I hate that I see people do and I really could make that a much longer video. Um, I just have to sit here and go through Pinterest with you and start screaming and yelling at some of the people. Um, especially when it comes to covered litter box ideas. So many people want to hide their litter box and cover them and then use a litter box that is like 13, 14 inches wide and 18 inches long. That is the size for a kitten. Um, it's not fair to a cat to give them something that big, but people think it's okay because the smaller the better because they can hide it easier and they can put it in furniture. 
and then they can forget it's there and they only scoop it once a week and the furniture holds the ammonia smell so the cat is gagging while it is I've seen this while it is on the litter box um I've ha had a client actually bring in a video of, why is my cat doing this? And it was a covered litter box, a Rubbermaid container style one, and the cat was getting overwhelmed by the ammonia smell while trying to use the bathroom. Um, have I used glue cover, or the soft paws, what the, the nail covers are? Um, yes, they work. They have to be put on properly. Um, a lot of people either put too much glue I, I, I had an assistant at a clinic that got banned from ever putting them on again, um, that she would do way too much glue. So you go to put the cap on and then glue gets all over the paws and then the hair like becomes solid, sharp pieces. It's not good to do too much glue, but at the same time, too little of glue can be bad too because you're, it's not really holding the, the nails on or the caps on. And people don't realize you need to trim your na the nails before you put the rubber caps on. And there are differences. The knockoff caps do not function as well. Just a soft rubber cap isn't going to hold as well. If you get the Soft Paws brand, they have these little grooves on the inside that hold the glue. So when you put the glue in, you don't have to use very much, but it helps filter all the glue down to where it's actually touching against the nail. So it's, I can draw again. I had that in front of me. All right, so, oh, that, that was, we're gonna start that one over. <laughs> okay, so nail cover. Kind of looks like a nail, but the soft paw has these ridges on the inside that help feed the glue where the glue, when you uh, first put the cat's claw in, it pushes the glue up here. But then as it starts to dry, the, it feeds the glue to come down these edges. So you don't have to use as much uh, glue, but it really holds well. So Soft Paws brand with these ridges. And it comes in so many cute colors. I mean, um, and then my husky's younger day, she had the tendency of clawing us, kind of like a cat, where she would kind of hold on and pull. Um, and she would get so excited between her, I guess, bedroom slippers, like Grinch feet, um, and the hardwood floor, she'd be slipping around. So I would put the soft paws, they have dog size. I put those on her and it gave her so much better traction. Uh, so I didn't have to keep the bedroom slippers trimmed as much. Um, and they were so cute. They were lavender, the ones I always got her. They were just so stinking cute. And of course, back then I got a discount at the vet. So it cost me, you know, like a dollar or something to order them. I, but I think a one package, even for dogs, is five to ten bucks. Um, and you typically can get multiple uses out of one package. Um, but yes, definitely trim the nails first. Don't go overboard on the glue. And have someone help you. Don't try to do it by yourself. Trust me. So much easier with someone just holding the cat, keeping them uh, occupied. And then you push the claw to make it extract out. You put the cap on. And then you sit there for 10 seconds or so with the cloth still out before you let it retract back in. Um, and I could do all four paws in less than five minutes. So it's not, once you get used to it, the first time is going to be tricky. But after the first time, you start catching on to what you're doing. There are a few pets that will sit there and try to chew them off. But if they're glued on, they don't chew off all too easily. And for the most part, if you pull them on right in the first place, your cat's not even going to know they're there. <sighs> Thank you for the tip, pun intended. Yes. And... I think that's it. I, uh, I know some of you have asked for a little health update. I feel weird always talking about it during the lives, but it's the easiest time and I do get questions about it. Um, 
beginning of March, I have my surgery to redo my ureter or uh, I, I, I won't know what's actually going to happen until I wake up. So either they're moving my kidney, if just a little bit of, of the ureter is damaged, or using the inside of my mouth to make a patch for the ureter, um, or if too much is damaged, they're just removing the kidney. So I'm not going to know what's going to happen until I wake up from the surgery. And that's at the beginning of March. Um, so yeah, I'm just taking it easy. Um, yeah, there's not, I'm not doing my weekly videos. I'm very sorry about that. I have so many ideas that are built up in my head that I want to do. But anytime I, I use my right arm, it starts to make my uh, side hurt. I do have, oh God, I forgot the proper name for it. Uh, Neff. Uh, a nephrostomy. Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, basically, I have a tube coming out of my kidney out of my back right now. Um, you can kind of see I got like a little valve right here. It's lovely. Um, that is going to, it, that's helping the urethra not have, or urethra, ureter, the tube that drains the kidney. Um, they pull the scent out of it and they knew it was going to close back up and they didn't want the kidney to get damaged while waiting for the surgery. So that's why I have the tube coming out of my back. Um, so yeah, so that's where I am with that. I can't do a whole lot, um, even like household stuff. My, my house looks like a bomb went off, but <laughs> it's almost over. I had like two and a half weeks and then I can start to recover and get back to myself and make the cat climbers that are in my head and the cat wheels. There are two different ones I want to do. I really can't wait for. Um, I have one that is the, I had made a dollar store version that I just wanted to see if I could even make a wheel. It was my very first video for wheels. And uh, I wanted to see if I could use only Dollar Tree material. And I get so much hate for it being only 30 inches wide. Yes, I know that's kitten size. And hey, my cat was a kitten at the time. So um, I'm going to see if I can do it, but as a four foot wheel um, and still have it hold up for cats and be safe. And then I also have my wheel that I really like, the one that if you ever see it's the blue one, the big four foot wheel. Um, I love the structure of that. It worked really well, but I want something that rescue groups can make and clean easily. They can't clean foam board. It'll just start to fall apart. So they can't sanitize it. They can't clean it. Um, so it's not a good option for them. But a lot of rescue groups need treadmills for their cats, uh, cat wheels. Um, it helps with some of the behavioral issues. And buying a $250 to $1,000, depending on what they're buying, a cat wheel just isn't an option for these groups. So I want an inexpensive one that volunteers can make for them that can be sanitized. So, and then I have so many climbers in my head and wall units and, oh goodness, I, it's, it's a bad problem. I, I love making cat stuff, unfortunately. Um, I made a joke the other day. Um, I got to meet uh, one of the people that I, I am friends with online um, through some of my husband's stuff. And um, I made a joke about we were outside. I was like, yeah, I could find stuff out here to make cat toys out of. I, because I really could. And my that's how my head works. I look at everything and kind of think of, um, is it cat friendly? Can it be a cat toy? If it has nothing to do with cats whatsoever, how could I actually improve that myself? Um, I just, I guess I have an inventor mind for sure. Um, so yeah. And, oh, a Houdini proof cat harness. That was actually going to be one of the very first things I was thinking about making a video of. Um, but I decided not to. Um, after talking with the person that I was talking about in the very beginning of the video, the chirps and chatter lady, Miss Tabitha, 
there's so much risk of if it's not made properly of a cat running away and getting hit by a car. Like I had a client that um, the cat ended up escaping while they were outside of the clinic. The carrier was zip tied together and the zip ties broke. Um, the cat was never seen again. It, there was a graveyard next to our clinic um, and it ran into the graveyard and was never seen again. Uh, and on a very, very, very busy road. Um, so there's a lot of risk involved when it comes to making harnesses. There are some really good ones. Um, I do not for cats recommend anything that's made like a dog harness where it's the, that dog collar material that wraps around. Cats can slink out of that so easily. I love the cat harnesses that Velcro. Um, the ones that kind of have, here, let's see. I can, I can draw this. Kind of looks like a gingerbread cookie in shape almost. Velcro here, okay. Okay. So, so something that kind of wraps around on like the head would go right here. It has Velcro on it that you can just flip the Velcro around the cat on, on the front, uh, um, in front of the shoulders, around the neck. Not too thick though, because some, some companies make it where like the cat's choking. Um, and then around the abdomen. But the abdomen one, you do want to be bigger. You don't want it to be as skinny as the neck is. Um, the skinnier, the easier it is for the cat to slink out of. Um, And yeah, so that's why I stayed away from doing a harness because I don't want to worry that someone's doing it the wrong way and ends up having a cat that runs away and gets hurt or something happens to them. Um, there's enough risk with what I do that people, you know, all toys are to be monitored while being played with. Um, I had someone try to tell me that their cat ate the, f oh, their cat ate the foam board, um, over a month period of time. They left me a message saying that their cat ate foam board over a month and ate so much of it that it, it built up in the stomach. When talking to her, she knew that her cat had been eating the foam board and did nothing about it. Kept the item out. Um, and then she tried to tell me that it ate an eight inch solid piece, which I don't believe whatsoever. Um, I think the lady may have been messing with me. The more and more she was writing back and forth and complaining and threatening to sue me for money, um, it, it didn't make sense. A cat is not going to get it eight inch by one inch piece of foam board down solid. Um, and then she said she noticed it, the cat had been eating it, different pieces of it for a month. I'm like, that's all on her. But... There's enough of worrying that people aren't always aware of what's going on with their pets and that they will let something harm them that shouldn't really be something that should be harmful. But it's kind of like if you build a cat tree for your cat and your cat decides to take a leap from the top shelf of it and breaks their leg. There are, it's kind of like kids and playing sports. There's <laughs> I guess there's always that little risk involved. Um, hopefully your cat's smart enough not to take a seven foot dive, but it happens. Um, oh, Miss Lisa from Flippin' Crazy is here. I took forever in getting her. Um, I did, um, oh. <laughs> I did one of these guys for her um, for an auction she was doing and someone bet on it, won the auction, and then donated it back to her. Um, and then I got sick and couldn't meet up with her because we're about 45 minutes away from each other. And I just, I, I wasn't coming in my garage, so out of sight, out of mind. Um, but I ended up getting my husband to mail baby Yoda to Miss Lisa. So now she has him. Um... Is feeding cats canned salmon or tuna okay? It depends on what vet you ask, honestly. Um, the salt content of both can be very high. Salt in cats 
can be dangerous. Um, they, it can be, um, they can get too much sodium in the body and it can be toxic. So you have to be very careful with small amounts of things. Like if you have a cat that's not really wanting to eat uh, or drink, adding a little bit of watered down tuna broth or if it's just a, a few licks, tuna juice is just fine, a few flakes, I wouldn't be feeding them it every day, at least when it's canned. Fresh is a little bit of a different story. Um, oh, Lisa says that he, uh, Baby Yoda is in her background now when she does her live videos. She does um, online auctions of jewelry, and I, if I remember right, there's some other things that get mixed in, but jewelry. Um, so let's see, what else do we have here? Um, also clam juice is acceptable too, especially when you have a cat that's not wanting to eat or drink, trying to get anything in them, you do what you can. Um, but as they start to eat and drink, you want to offer them other things. Um, on that same note, baby food, heat it up and warming these things too, if they're not eating really does help. Uh, but baby food. Cats love baby food. It's just that easy to lick down solution. I used it a lot when I did emergency work and uh, critical care. And I think that kind of sums up everything for today. I feel like I've been talking forever. I have been talking forever. It says 71 minutes. I joke around that I could talk to a brick wall because I really could or I can talk to an iPad. <laughs> But thank you all for joining me today. I hope this kind of helped you realize some of the things that you may or may not be doing correctly. Um, I'd love to say that, you know, everyone's perfect and none of this is needed, but as my venting showed, um, I see a lot of people online that don't necessarily do these things correctly. And by the way, my hair is growing. Being in the basement with, the, with it raining outside, it, it's going to go back early. But, and I think that, let me double check my notes and I summed up everything. Um, at the very beginning of the live stream, I did put the person that is the cat expert behaviorist, behavioralist, <laughs> one of those words, um, really good with cats with issues, <laughs> behavior issues, um, chirps and chatter. Um, so you can always go back. I'll try to remember to put it in the uh, description box. She does do online, like through FaceTime and stuff like that, online appointments. So she can help someone that's anywhere in the country. It's like having a Jackson Galaxy without a guitar case. Um, that, oh my God, don't tell Jackson I said this because I do know him. I've met him a few times. He likes some of the products I used to make back when I worked for the cat toy company. Um, by the way, Jackson, I can design some great toys for you to sell for your line. Just if anyone knows him. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I really think she's the best in the country. Um, Tabitha just has an instinct when it comes to cats. And for those of you that do work with rescue groups and stuff like that, um, she has handouts on her website that are free for people to give out that just talk about a lot of these behavioral issues, especially the litter box, um, and peeing issues. So definitely check her out. I am not really like, I just know her coming and going. So I, I can't say that she's getting any kickback whatsoever. I just adore what she does. Um, uh, cat here. <laughs> she, um, she has, uh, a lot of lectures that she does that are online ones that are for just anyone. Like, um, I met her, it wasn't CatCon. It was, I can't remember what they called it. It was like the Cat of CatCon, but for New Jersey. Um, that's where I first met her and she was wonderful. Um, but yeah, she lectures everywhere on behavior issues for cats. Uh, she does dogs too, so if you need her. Um, but yeah, that's what she does and what she's really good at. And thank you for my happy Valentine's Day. Oh, had a f cat that would kill for the juice out of crab. I, I'd kill for any part of a crab. I, I <laughs> Crab's my weakness. Um, 
but yeah, crab juice is good. But remember, fresh caught crab can have a hot, high salt content to it too. Keep that in mind. Um, yeah, mainly when I've seen cats that had salt issues, um, it, there was a cat, cat that licked one of those salt lamps and had a fetish for it and it didn't go well, we'll just say. So keep the salt lamps away from your cats too. Um, but yeah, it's the day before Valentine's Day, I think. Yeah, tomorrow's Valentine's Day. <laughs> My husband and I, we are, we are horrible at, um, hiding presents. Like, we'll do Christmas a month ahead of time, especially before we had kids. Um, we've already done our Valentines. Um, I got, I'm, I'm weird. You know, I'm one of those women that ask for things that are, you know, like vacuum, stuff like that, because I really want it and need an excuse to, to spend that money. So I got an air fryer, which has been working out great this week. And my husband, um, if you know, he pulls cars out of rivers or he's getting into that. Um, he was missing a few items. So I got him the chains he needed and a snatch block, which is like this hook with a pulley on it. Um, and um, just different items. Ooh, I have a picture of it because I took pictures because I set it up like a moron um, and made it all. Okay, let's see if you guys can see this through my phone. I set it up, all the different pieces, and it's probably reversed, um, but it says Nug, which is his, he's exploring with the Nug. So I made it spell out Nug, and then I made a card to go with it, because I'm that cheesy, that if you can see this, it says, you snatched my heart. <laughs> and see, it's a car coming out of the river with a snatch block attached to the tree. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm special. We haven't done anything really for Valentine's Day in a few years because things have been so crazy for us. Um, but I knew he needed these last few things to be able to pull cars out on his own and not have to rely on other people's stuff. Um, what type, oh, someone asked, what type of baby food should you give your cat? So through doing critical care, I have experimented with basically every flavor. They don't like vegetables. Um, we always, in the clinics, we always got a meat flavor. Um, it's a little harder to find, but the veal flavor, yes, they make it, or the lamb flavor, works really well because when you heat it up it stinks and that gets a cat that's not wanting to eat very well really enticed but they do like the turkey the chicken the beef but the the veal and the lamb just especially the lamb you know it has that mutton smell um it it's something that they really like yep just their plain meats not the ones that are mixed with anything um Usually it's like Kroger or, gosh, I'm trying to think of where, we would get big pallets of that we ordered at one place through like Sam's Club um, when we needed a veal. Um, but yeah, some of the not so fancy stores, to put it nicely, like not Target, um, not Publix, but like Kroger, Ingles, I don't know what you all have in your area, probably the Piggly Wiggly because we had some of those in my area. Not close to me though. That's a little more south because um, I'm in Georgia. Um, yeah, the lower end stores seem to have the better selection when it comes to cats, <laughs> when it comes to the baby food that they like. Um, yep, so the chicken, turkey, beef, any of the planes. Um, get the, if your cat's sick or like a kidney failure cat that you're trying to get enticed to eat, you want the smoother ones for some reason. Um, I think it, one, if you have to ever force feed, it goes down easily. But when cats aren't feeling well and then they get a chunk all of a sudden, they're like, Ugh. um, but if you just want to feed your cat baby food, it is a lower salt content, so it, that's not an issue. Um, 
It is lower carb, just like any other canned food for them. Um, yeah, just stay away from the 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 veggie ones. Um, but of course, that can't be their only source of food. Um, yep, Amy said that her husband uh, and she did the Valentine's on a Thursday night. See, it's not just us. Even though we, I don't think we, before kids, we never made it a holiday, a single holiday, and actually made it to that holiday to give the gift. Um, birthday, you name it. Everything was always early because we get so excited to give each other stuff. Um, and we're going on 14 years? Wait. <laughs> August makes 14 years. I'm trying to think because um, recently we were talking about our cat's age and how old she was. She was a year and a half when I met him. Um, so we were talking about how she's coming up on, she's turning 15. But she doesn't look it. Well, hair quality a little bit. Um, yes, high, uh, baby food does have a high moisture content to it. So that's very good. And it can be diluted with more water. Um, especially for the kidney failure cats. Getting the most moisture in them any way you can is a good idea. And yeah. So I will wrap it up. Actually wrap it up this time. Uh, thank you all for joining me. And I hope this answered a lot of questions. If you have any others, you're welcome to leave them in the comments below. Have a very good Valentine's Day. And I will see you all probably, I'll probably have a video come out. One more before I have my surgery. And then, eh, maybe. I might wait till afterwards. And then after, when I'm recovering. So it might be up to a month from now. I hate to do that, but it is what it is. Um... Off topic, if anyone likes African wildlife, check out Wild Earth. Okay. Uh, oh, I should watch it while recovering from my surgery. Yeah. I Because of the issues, I, I've watched a lot of TV. I'm kind of done with it. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Everyone have a very good day. I will see you all maybe a month from now. Bye, guys. Oh, I can't reach. <laughs>